we have actually Indian batch. We don't have any international with us. So if you want to join international batch, you have to pay two thousand dollars more. Hi guys, and today we have a very special guest, Deepthi Umesh, a final year MBBS student from Our Lady of Fatima University, Valenzuela, Philippines. Thank you for joining. Thank you. Thank you for having me, Shivam. <laughs> So studying MBBS in abroad raises a lot of questions in the minds of young aspirants. So today we have Deepthi who is pursuing MBBS in Philippines and we will have a conversation on the common FAQs about the city in which the college is located because you really need a lot of information about the city where you'll be staying and about the college too. So it will be a combined video for the city review as well as the college review. So let's begin firstly like why did you choose staying like studying in our lady of fatima university out of the other medical universities in philippines uh i found it in the top listed so that's why <laughs> i thought it would be yeah. a better option yeah definitely a big reason and like is the city safe for the students tell me about the security there no it's completely safe i can say that it's completely safe okay and uh, like uh, do you think that there are advantages over staying in uh, valenzuela as in compared to the other cities in philippines no it's same like uh, yeah it's a very a uh, traffic uh, kind of thing in valen manila because it's a capital but if you go to some other places it's quite it's quite but yeah it's same like studying thing will be similar there there won't be any changes okay. with the subjects or something okay so means like i understand studying will be the same but then there is a difference when you change the cities right so that's why i was just trying to understand that whether uh, the life is different in the various cities like yeah valenzuela and the capital city of manila yeah that's definitely there it's like manila you it's you feel like you're staying in bangalore and if you go to some other place it will be like um mysore like mysore will be the silent place so i can say mysore <laughs> Yeah, now the the audience already understood that you are someone from Karnataka because you gave yeah. <laughs> examples of both the cities from Karnataka. Okay, now moving on. Like, uh, what is the main language used by the population in the city? It's Tagalog, Filipino language. So, like, you need to know that. No, no, it's not compulsory. You can just talk to them in English; they'll answer you. Okay, okay, that's great. And how's the climate there? Like, is it easy to adjust for an Indian student? No, it's it's very uh, friendly. It's same actually. If you're Indian, it's like absolutely for you to stay out. There is no snow. There is nothing such thing. Same, summer, winter, rainy. Okay. okay. And like, how's the food? Uh, is that also like easy to adjust for an Indian student? Uh, it's quite difficult because for me it's difficult. <laughs> uh i'm veget i was vegetarian but i started having chicken after coming here so chicken it's especially if it is from kfc and mcdonalds nothing else because i cannot eat it so you have to know little bit of cooking which will save your life no it it can save your day you have messes like uh 3 4 but yeah it's kind of not like you cannot depend on them all the time how in india we do not we don't depend on messes because we don't like mess food most of the time and it's the same when you come to other country you don't like mess food either okay okay and like what is the cost of living uh, when compared to the other cities uh it's a little bit high but um if you go if you go in search of houses for the uh single room with uh if you want to stay alone then you have to go in search of it but you'll find it like my house right now it's 6000 but back then i used to pay 10000 just for one just what for one hall there was nothing else just a hall so 10000 indian rupees right no, 10000 indian rupees no it's a 10000 okay, pesos. pesos which is equal to i guess 15 rupees uh, 15000 rupees if i'm not wrong 15000 yeah So it was just one hall, and I used to pay ten thousand. And before that, in the first, like in the beers, I used to stay in apartment. So that used to cost you again ten thousand because uh, you have like two rooms and one hall. Uh, so you pay ten, and the other person will pay ten. It's like that. So I wanted to stay alone, so I came out. I I searched for it, and yeah, I, I'm not right now. I'm staying in six thousand pesos uh, house. And how much are you paying right now? Like you are quarantined, so ten days. Like you are staying where? Is it a hotel or 
where is that place uh, it's hotel it's nearby to valencia city it's a kilzan city so it's compulsory <laughs> to uh, it's mandatory so it's 10 days so it cost me 14500 pesos so again okay. i would say it is 22000 ina <laughs> Okay, so fourteen thousand five hundred pesos for uh, like ten days or just one day? Uh, it's ten days. No, I wouldn't have paid if it is for one day. <laughs> okay, so jokes apart, like coming back to your university, like how old is your university? I'm not sure. I guess it's something like fifteen years, if I'm not wrong. Old and popular enough. Okay. Okay. So fifteen years, and there at the top, like one of the top universities in medical universities in Philippines. Wow, that's great. That's great to hear. And what is the FMG passing ratio from that college? Oh, forty percent. Oh, that that's pretty great. You know, like that's nice. Back in twenty twenty uh, nineteen uh, or twenty twenty, there were many. Uh, but yeah, uh, let me not be that sure. Like it's forty. I guess it's forty fifty in between that. I'm not sure about it. Yeah, out of hundred students, if forty fifty students are actually qualifying, that's great. That's like that's a good ratio. Yeah. And how many students? Like how many Indian students are there? Like usually people feel more comfortable when more students and uh, classmates come from their own country. So how many Indian students there? We have actually Indian batch. We don't have any international with us. So if you want to join international batch, you have to pay two thousand dollars more, and yeah, that's that's how it works. Uh, Indian batch, separate Indian batch. We have like two session, two sections, and for international batch, you have one section. Uh, you can be Indian, it can be anyone around the world, and Filipinos uh, batches sections they have like. Three, four, so we are almost hundred in per one section. So more than hundred, like one ten or one twenty, like that. So basically, in one medical college, there are more than hundred Indian students. That's like wow. <laughs> more than hundred, okay. I can say. So you might just find acquaintances there if you fly fly to Philippines to study medical. You might just find acquaintances because there's so many people going there. Yeah. Okay, and like, what are the approvals and ratings? Like, is it uh, approved by NCI? Who listed? What is the level of accreditation? Yeah, it is. It is. It's a, uh, as I said, it's a topmost college. Yeah, it is recognized by okay. NCI. Okay, and like, uh, what is the course curriculum in your college? Like, specifically of your college? Like, how is the education system of Philippines like here different from in India? Like, is it uh, comparatively more strict or is it more relaxing? Can can you actually give proxies, bunk classes, uh, like enter into co-curricular activities? Like, how is the scenario? Yes, we can bunk, but uh, yeah, we are here for studying, so it's 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 better to attend the classes. And the uh, doctors, that is doctors, they are very friendly to us. If we don't understand, they make us, uh, they make it so easy that we don't feel any difficulty. Especially if you go for any uh, practicals, uh, like especially when back in second year or third year when I when I used to go for clinical medicine rotation to my wards, uh, it was kind of good. Like they were very friendly. They don't yell at us for our mistakes, nothing like that. And like, do these professors use English for teaching? Yeah, yeah, English. It's always okay. English. Yeah. And like, uh, how is the hostel? Like, any advantages like uh, about the hostel, the hostel facilities, the laundry, CCTVs? Like, if you could give a brief overview. You, you. We don't have hostels. Okay. Yeah, and laundries you find it everywhere. Like every single sh- after every two shops, so it's easy for us. So basically, uh, you guys stay in PGs. Or like rented houses, right? Rented houses. There is no PGs. There are some dorms, but uh, I don't think anyone of anyone of us stays there. It's just like you, uh, we take a house and or a room, and then that's how we stay. There's no PG or hostels. Okay, okay. And uh, how is the accessibility of your college from your rented house? To be frank. Uh, if this is, uh, it's just like uh, within a half, three hundred, five hundred meters. It's not that far. It's like back side of your college gate will be your house. That's it's that nearby. Okay, okay. And like, how are the seniors? Is there any kind of ragging scene in the campus? 
no they are very helpful actually <laughs> most of the indians they because we all are from, uh, outsiders they want us to stay safe so they make sure when they uh, after we arrive here they call us they make sure we are safe uh, we, they ask us do they want any do uh, do we want anything yeah they are very careful like they don't do any ragging and stuff if we have any problem we can directly go to them and talk and they will solve it okay okay so that's great to hear and i guess we covered almost all the aspects of the like all the topics which a student might uh, want to know before flying abroad so that's the end of the session it was a wonderful one and i hope the audience loved it so basically thank you deepthi it was great having you thank you thank you shivam thank you for having me